Hi, it's, it's been a while. Oh, is that my Indy? It really has been a long time. I was worried, darling. You haven't managed me in almost half a year. How are you? Are you eating properly? Is work going all right? Yeah, it's not too bad, I guess. I'm still only in my second year at the company, so there's always new stuff to remember. That's why I've been too busy to message you. Really? That sounds tough. Be careful you don't overwork yourself. I don't want you getting sick, sweetie. Are you okay for money? What about rice and vegetables? Do you have enough? I can send you some money or food parcels if you like. Just say the word and it's done. I can't afford to give you lots, but I'll send whatever I can. Nah, I'm fine. I have a job and make my own money now. Besides, I can buy my own rice and vegetables. You don't have to go out of your way to send me anything. I'm fine on my own. I don't really eat much of that sort of these things anyway. Oh, I see. Well, I'm really happy to hear you're doing well, honey. But if you ever do need anything, you will tell me, won't you? I'd really like it if you just showed your face at the house sometimes, too. Even if it's just for Christmas and birthdays. I miss you, you know? Listen, Mom. I have something more important to talk about. Do you mind if we change the subject? Of course. Look at me getting all overexcited not letting you get a word in edgeways. Of course, honey. Go ahead. What is it? Well, it's like this. I'm getting married. What? Married? Yeah, to my boyfriend. We met at a work party. That was a year ago, though. We've been dating ever since. I never told you about him. Wow, Indy. I can't believe it. I'm so happy for you. I can't tell you how much this means to me. I'll admit I'm a little surprised, but let me assure you, I'll be celebrating for you tonight with a glass of red. The wedding's planned for six months from now, but the thing is, I don't want you to come. What? My fiancé is the son of a very rich man who runs a major company. He's intelligent, has a great personality, is good at his job. He's just amazing. I couldn't ask for more. His parents, too. They're kind, always look smart and well-dressed, are stinking rich, and are just all-around wonderful people. I'd be so ashamed to admit to such a decent, respectable people that I was raised in a single-mother household. To tell you the truth, just the thought of them finding out makes me feel sick. That's why I told them I have no parents, and don't know a single one of my relatives. Indy! Why are you saying these things? Why would you do that? Oh my god. I've always hated you. You're scruffy and unkempt. You have no fashion sense. You slave away at your minimum wage job to bring home what amounts to nothing more than pocket change. I hated that cheap, shabby old house we lived in too. I could never bring friends over because I felt so embarrassed. I hated it all. What? I had to endure so much, and the moment I tried to complain, I was told that it just couldn't be helped because we were poor. My clothes and school supplies were always either second-hand or handouts from people in the neighborhood. Throughout my whole childhood, I don't remember ever being bought anything that was actually new. You never came to sports days or parent evenings because you always had to put so many hours in that crappy job of yours. I was so lonely. I felt absolutely pathetic. It's true. I was always busy with work, and you did have to endure things most other children didn't. Which meant I didn't always have the time to give you the attention you deserved. And I understand that must have made you feel very isolated and lonely. I accept everything you say. I'm so sorry, Indy. Truly, I am. But all of it, everything I did was so that one day I could afford to send you to a good college. I did it all with your future in mind. I did it because I wanted you to lead a happy, fulfilling life. I never asked you to do any of that for me. This is just patronizing. You put me through all that and then have the nerve to act like you were doing me a favor? Indy. I guess I am grateful that you sent me to a good college. It did mean I was deprived of a normal childhood, though. I'd rather be stuck in my room studying or out working part-time while all my friends were out having fun and meeting people. Without going to college, I wouldn't have landed my current job or met my fiancé. 
I guess all things considered, on balance, I am willing to call it even. That means there's no ill will, but no positive sentiment either. A flat zero. I guess that makes us more or less strangers. I think it's time for me to cut you out of my life. Cut me out of your life? Why? I'm gonna be the wife of the CEO of a major company before long. That means I'm moving up in the world. You, on the other hand, are still broke, still working that crappy job, still in that decrepit old house. How can I let people know you're my mom? It's embarrassing. <laughs> me and you are a mismatch. Socially, financially, we just don't mesh. You get me? That's why I'm cutting you out of my life. Never attempt to contact me again. This is my chance to finally be happy and live the life I always dreamed of. Don't you dare get in my way. I see. If that's what you want, Indy, then there's nothing I can say. It's your life and you should live it as you see fit. But please, just remember that I'm about to tell you. Your mother will always love you. I wish for you nothing but happiness. Who are you? I don't have a mom. Um, hey. How's it going? It's Indy. Indy, it's been forever. It must have been, what, two years by now? How have you been? How's married life? Are you happy? Yeah, I'm doing okay, thanks. Listen, um... There's something I want to let you know, or rather, ask of you. Oh, of course. There's something I want to let you know, too, Indy. I'm getting remarried. Huh? You see, I felt like a weight had been lifted from my shoulders after you went off to live your life. I suddenly felt filled with energy. So I committed to building a new life for myself. I started going to a local ballroom dance club in the neighborhood last year. I've been toying with the idea of giving it a try since forever, but I was so busy with work, I never really got the chance. You? Ballroom dancing? I know, right? I had my doubts about it working out at my age, too. But when I plucked up the courage and actually went, I had a whale of a time. I made lots of friends there, too. Now we all go out for drinks regularly. Anyway, me and one of my dance partners started getting along really well. We realized we had the same interests, similar personalities. His name's Donald Silverstein. His wife passed away three years ago, and all of his children have flown the nest and have their own lives to lead now. So he currently lives on his own. After we hit it off at the dance club, he invited me out to dinner. Then we got together, and after we dated for a while, he got down on one knee, popped the question, and asked if I'd do him the honor of spending the rest of my life with him. Isn't it just amazing? That's why, from next year onward, I'll be called Louise Silverstein. Just hold on a sec! Does Donald by any chance have a really, really big house? Or should I say a mansion? Three floors, acres of garden complete with tennis courts and fountains? Huge, grand, and magnificent? Huh? How did you know? You're right, though. That's my Donald you're talking about. I actually went to his house for the first time recently after he proposed to me. It really is as amazing as you say. I almost fainted when I saw the gold-encrusted chandeliers. Luckily, his butler noticed I looked woozy and offered me a seat. His daughter was one of my classmates. Abigail Silverstein was her name. She tried to keep it on the down low, but everyone knew her dad was filthy rich. Word around school was he was a billionaire. If I had a guess, I'd say it's probably true. But I'm not marrying Donald for his money. It was his kindness and loyalty that I fell for. Neither of us are exactly spring chickens anymore, and we decided not to go into the trouble of having a wedding. But Donald will be holding a big dinner at his place. All of his kids will be there, so I get to meet everyone while we all celebrate the occasion with some food and drinks. Really? Actually, this is perfect. Make sure you send me, my husband, and his parents an invite to the dinner, okay? What? Why? Well, the thing is, my husband found out about you. He found out I was lying about not having any parents. He also knows I was raised by a single mother and that I broke off contact with you. Him and his parents were furious when they found out. 
How can you be so cruel to your poor mother after she worked so hard to send you to college? You disgust me, to quote my husband. Really, I see. Now, him and his parents are giving me the cold shoulder. And the image of the perfect bride I worked so hard to cultivate was smashed to pieces in an instant. Nothing's been the same since. He says he doesn't even know whether he wants to carry on. Divorce was mentioned. That's why I want me and you to build some bridges. Actually, that's why I messaged you today. Build some bridges? By that, I take it you mean you want to re reconcile and have me back in your life. Yeah, that's it. Let's do that. I need my husband and his parents to see that me and you patch things up and have a normal relationship. They have to know you forgave me too. That part's important. I think I can make them see that. He'll stop thinking about divorce. Besides, if you're married now, I'm not so embarrassed about introducing you anyway. Especially now you bag yourself a billionaire. If anything, I'm actually excited. You're gonna score me some major points by having a husband that rich. Plus, I think me being related to someone like Donald can only be a good thing. Now that you think about it, the merits are endless. So what do you think? You'll invite us, won't you? Pretty please with a cherry on top? Think of it as helping your daughter out. Oh, Indy, you see, the thing is, you're not my problem anymore. Huh? What does that mean? It means no. Why should I let you use my wedding dinner to get you out of being divorced? Me and Donald aren't your own personal tools to be used and manipulated as you see fit. You're an adult now. You have a job. You're married. You're well past the age where I fix your problems for you. You got yourself into this mess, so how about you get yourself out of it? How about you get yourself out of it? You can't go relying on your mommy forever. No, wait, please. Why not? What do you mean, why not? Because you reap what you sow, Indy. Liars always get found out. I mean, seriously. What did you expect to happen when you told your husband and his family you were an orphan? This was inevitable. And isn't it just a tad selfish of you to expect me to come crawling back to you the moment it suits you? After you cut me out of your life to present some phony, made-up image of yourself to your new family. I'd be embarrassed to introduce a daughter as shallow as you to my Donald. Oh my god! If you don't invite us, he might divorce me. All you have to do is let us show our faces for a few minutes. We'll leave after you meet him and his parents, I swear. Didn't you say you wish for nothing but happiness for me? It's true, I certainly did say that, and it's still true. But it's ultimately just that, a wish. I never once said I'd have anything to do with you again. Happiness is something you have to obtain on your own. Oh my god, come on, I'm begging you here. Do you have any idea how much trouble I'll be in if he divorces me? How hard I work to get to where I am today? I finally managed to marry into money after all these years. This can't be how it ends, it can't! Mom, please, I'm begging you. Hmm, who are you again? I'm terribly sorry, but I forgot. What are you talking about, Mom? You were talking normally until just now. Mom! Mom? Oh, that's strange. I don't have a daughter. She showed no sign of giving up, so I had no choice but to block her in the end. I sold the house to move in with Donald, and with that, the cutting of ties was complete. After that, I got a message from Indy's husband. It said, Please forgive me and my family for our rudeness. We would have contacted you immediately had we known about you. I thought it was a nice apology. Indy's relationship fell apart over the whole lying about being an orphan thing. Eventually, just as she feared, her husband divorced her. He kicked her out in the streets, and she had no choice but to move into the cheap old apartment she stayed back in college. 
Her standard of living was suddenly in the gutter, and with her life crashing and burning before her eyes, she was forced into long hours of overtime to keep up with the rent and student loan repayments. I also apologized to her ex-husband for the stress and inconvenience my daughter had caused him and his family. Since then, I haven't had contact with Indy, or anyone involved with later. A year later, me and Donald tied the knot. He and his kids are just darlings who are so very kind to me. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life, and I'm filled with optimism for the future. Hey, Miley. I heard you got a new boyfriend. Huh? Who'd you hear that from? Mom, told me last night. How could you, keeping secrets on your big sister? I heard he came to the house to say hello to Mom and Dad. Why didn't you give me a heads up? I would have rushed over. Well, because I didn't want to introduce you to him. I'm embarrassed to introduce you. You have no class. And to be honest, you're rude. Huh? What do you mean by that? No class. Your sister? The one who graduated from elite college. That big sister of yours? You have to be kidding me, lol. There. That's what I mean. That's what I hate about you. Mom showed me a photo of this boyfriend of yours. I wouldn't call him handsome, lol. To be honest, run-of-the-mill kind of guy. I see guys like that all the time. And his clothes? Not brand-made stuff. Pretty drab, lol. I would prefer you say clean and polished. Brad is not like that. He hates that showy and tasteless fashion sense. It's always about brands. Like some people I know. Boy, you've always been the black sheep of the family. Mediocre at school. Face? Nothing to write home about. Couldn't you at least have found a better guy? Take a look at me and my boyfriend. You can learn a thing or two about good looking. Where else can you find such a well-educated, good-looking couple like us, lol. Yeah, yeah, I heard this all before. Well, let's just forget about looks or how he dresses. Where'd your boyfriend go to school, by the way? Which university did he graduate from? Why do I have to even tell you that? Besides, it's none of your business. It's got everything to do with me. You know, I'm getting married in six months. And if you end up marrying this guy, well then, we're all relatives. I don't want to be embarrassed when I introduce my relatives to people. Oh my god, don't tell me you went to the community college in town. I know you're not too bright, but you wouldn't go out with a guy from that place. Is educational background so important? If you have to know, he went as far as high school. He decided not to go on to college. Huh? High school? You mean to tell me he only finished high school? Not high, higher education? You mean like, really high school? Yep, that's right. You're kidding me, right? Tell me you're joking. He's a high school graduate, that's it? Yes, that's right. Huh? No way! I thought everyone went on to college these days, even if it's a community college. He decided not to go on to college, so what? This is unbelievable. Okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but a boyfriend that's only a high school grad? This is too much, lol. Wait, are you really, I mean seriously going out with this loser? You're just dating, having a little fun, right? Uh, do you really plan to marry a mere high school grad? Yeah, I'm serious about him. I like him a lot. I'm planning on marrying him, and he feels the same way. That's why he came to meet mom and dad. Holy crap, you're serious. Good grief. What are you going to do? I mean, please. A high school grad, really? And I keep saying, so what? I don't care about his educational background. I fell in love with him. What can I say? He's nice and he's courteous, and he's a damn hard worker. Couldn't ask for more. I fell in love with who he is, not his education. Oh my god, you guys are still in high school. Fitting, lol. You sound like a teenager. Just a couple of teenagers. You guys are made for each other. Think what you like. I can't believe you're actually my sister. Hey, so we only finished high school. What kind of work does a high schooler do? I mean, there is no way he can work at a major corporation. The only job I can think of him doing is some blue collar stuff. Perhaps a bit of trash collecting, lol. You know me. I went to a really elite college, so I'm not sure what such people do, lol. You're really being rude. He's in the food business. But Brad does not really want me to say much about his job. Okay, a high school grad, working in the food industry. Hmm, I know. He's a dishwasher, right? Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody knowing either. I would be totally embarrassed. You got it all wrong. Hey, you know, about my wedding... I said you could bring a date, but... Please not this kid. I don't want him anywhere near a wedding. Huh? What do you mean? It means I don't want some uneducated dishwasher coming to my wedding. That's all. I can't very well tell my friends that this guy is my little sister's boyfriend, or worse, her fiancé? Oh my god, no way. All my guests, as well as my fiancés, are all from top universities, and they currently make considerable salaries. 
I even had qualms about inviting you. And you want to bring a high school grad who works a dishwasher? It's not happening. Huh? And he's not a dishwasher. Do you realize that we booked our wedding reception at that famous restaurante? There was a three-year wait for that place. Do you even know what a restaurante is? It's a high-class restaurant that has a strict dress code. That's what a restaurante is. And you know what? The patissier? The pastry chef for a novice like you. This chef recently won a world-famous event in Paris. We're going to have him bake our wedding cake. Can you believe it? So you see, I don't want some high school grad coming to my wedding and tainting the whole affair. I hope you understand. We just can't allow ourselves to serve such low-status people, if you get my drift, lol. You never change. I wish you would stop demeaning people like that. How could you say that, low-status people? Are you serious? Well, it's true, isn't it? I mean, you guys are the ones who would be ashamed if you attended anyway. Besides, low status probably means he doesn't even have the proper clothes to wear. I don't want him coming to the wedding in his old high school sweatshirt, lol. We'd be the laughing stock of the whole town. Low status people will be restricted from attending my wedding. If you don't drop this guy before our wedding, well, I have no choice but to uninvite you to our wedding. You know, I really didn't want to attend anyway. I don't want to attend a wedding of someone who denigrates my boyfriend. Anyway, it would be a total waste to buy a wedding gift for the likes of you. Don't be so stubborn. You're such a child, lol. Okay, so you're not attending the wedding. I'll scratch you off the list then. I guess you're just going to have to sit at home with your dishwasher boyfriend twiddling your thumbs. Hey, Miley, pick up. I was just at the restaurant where we were going to hold a reception. I was with the wedding planners and guess what? Your boyfriend was there. What was he doing there? Is he the dishwasher there, lol? Huh? Hey, is the restaurant that you chose? Is it the one where Brad works at? Yeah, I guess it is, lol. I'm usually surrounded by very fashionable and handsome people, so... With that country boy looks, he's really stood out. Spotted him right away. A high school graduate, and he can work at a high-class place like that, lol. But he's a professional dishwasher by now, lol. I wonder how much a dishwasher makes at a place like that. Like I said, Brad is not a dishwasher. Well, I couldn't very much ignore him, so I said hello. I said it was Brenda, Miley's older sister. I was just curious, you know, so I had to ask. I asked him why he only finished high school. Was it because his folks were poor? Sorry, I had to ask. He was really nervous, stood there with his mouth agape. What a sight, lol. I really can't believe you. He's working. How could you disrespect him like that? What's wrong with you? So what if the dishwasher takes a little break? Nobody cares about some lowly kitchen staff, lol. Oh yeah, listen to this. I figured I would tell him since he was there. I told him that it was our policy not to invite people with inadequate educational backgrounds to your wedding. I went as far as to tell him that no such uneducated people enter the restaurante at least one month before my wedding, lol. Have you totally lost it? You told him that? Of course I did. I mean, a mere high school grad just seems vulgar. Not for fit for respectable people like us. Nobody's lets a mangy stray don to a restaurant, right? Much less a high-class place like that. I told him he's gonna work there. He needs to disinfect himself before entering. I really can't believe I'm hearing this. Have you become unhinged? You definitely have a few screws loose. My screws are perfectly fine, lol. Besides, your boyfriend? When I told him not to enter the restaurante, you know what he had to say? He said, very well, miss. I will do as you say. Can you believe this guy? For a mere high school graduate, he certainly knows his place. He didn't talk back at all and just sulked away like a beaten dog, lol. Not the vigorous and fearless young man, that's for sure, lol. Oh boy, you went and did it. That means there will be no wedding cake. What a shame. Huh? Cake? What the hell are you talking about? Uh, well, I suppose you already know where you work, so it doesn't matter anymore. Just going to have to be truthful, I guess. The Brad you so despise is the patissier at the restaurant. Huh? Yep, Brad studied at the top patissier academy in France, and... He recently won the award at that world-famous patissier contest in Paris last year. That world-renowned patissier that you were so proud of? Well, that is none other than my boyfriend, Brad. Now you're the one that has a few screws loose, lol. That uneducated country boy, a world-renowned patissier, give me a break, lol. It's true. His father's also a patissier. He currently works in Paris. 
That's right. Right after graduating from high school, he flew to Paris to be with his dad and to attend the Petitier Academy there. It was the same place his father graduated from. He then worked for several years at one of the top Petitier establishments in Paris. He returned about two years ago and currently works at that restaurant where you plan to have your wedding, minus the cake, of course. You're kidding, right? No, I'm afraid it's true. Well, I guess you kicked him out, so nothing to do with you anymore, right? You told him to stay away for a month, right? I don't see how he'll be able to make that cake for you. I guess you're going to have to make do with something from Costco, lol. Hold on a second! If that's true, no, no, it can't be. Why didn't you tell me about him when you first mentioned him? Well, like I said, Brad didn't want me telling everyone. Some years back, a short while after he returned from Paris, this neighbor found out he was a pâtissier and constantly asked him to make her and her friends all kinds of pastries. He just could deal with that. That's why he wanted me to keep it quiet. But even though you didn't know his background, denigrating someone like you did Brad, that's not what a respectable person does. How could I have known? A mere high school grad, a fashionable occupation, like a pâtissier? Who would think? You always look at people according to their educational achievements. That's why you always end up in embarrassing situations. Hold on a second. I just got a text message from the wedding planner. Uh, it seems because I restricted his entry into the restaurant, all the chefs in the kitchen are apparently furious. They said they are going on strike! They are not going to cook for my wedding! What the hell am I going to do? The chefs are on strike? LOL. Oh, you really did it this time. Guess you're just going to have to apologize or find another venue. I can't do that! I already told all my friends that I was holding my wedding reception at that place. I waited three years to reserve a spot there! I can't give it up now! No way I can find another place at this late date! Well, your only option is to apologize. Right? If you're so set on having the reception there, I don't see any other way. How am I going to- Oh yeah, Miley. You're his girlfriend. Talk to him and apologize on my behalf, please. Get him to come back. Sorry, not going to happen. Huh? Why should I apologize? You created this mess, you clean it up. The responsible thing to do is to admit your mistake and apologize to Brad. Simple as that. And you're asking the wrong person. I'm still super pissed at you for trashing my boyfriend. You want me to admit my mistake and apologize to this guy? Some snotty high school graduate? No way that's happening. You go and apologize to him. Do it now. I cannot stain my perfect lifestyle by stooping so low. Well, you certainly have no remorse, I see. Wow, to think this is my older sister. How embarrassing. I will not help you out. That's it. How could you treat your older sister this way? Just do as I say! That's an order! I'm practically begging you! Maybe you should go back to elementary school and... ...relearn proper etiquette, lol. After that, my sister reluctantly went to the restaurant to apologize, but... ...she merely brought up her status as an elite college graduate with many rich friends or whatsoever. The usual drivel. Her attitude was so condescending that it just made things worse. What's more, during the supposed apology, she again blurted out the fact that Brad was a mere high school grad. She just couldn't keep her mouth shut. The restaurant staff were furious with her arrogance and... They in turn canceled the reservation and prohibited her from ever again entering the restaurant. This incident also caused the relationship with her fiancé to go downhill. Well, that spat escalated beyond remedy and eventually they broke off the engagement. Brenda was so shocked by what had happened to her so-called perfect life, she wouldn't come out of the house anymore. Academic background does not make a person. I don't see why my sister does not realize that. I told Brad how sorry I was to have a sister like that. I was ready to break up with him, he so desired, but he had no intention of doing that, but instead smiled and forgave me. He even suggested that we have our wedding reception at the restaurante, lol. I'm sure I won't have to wait three years for a reservation. 